Welcome to this video about industrial cybersecurity. I am Frank Vandenbergen, CEO of Timmy. Timmy is a company that develops and sells a software solution named Timmy that allows to solve any data science problem. And today I'm going to talk about security in the field of data science application. You may wonder, why is a data scientist talking about cybersecurity? That's because data scientists are very creative, and if you are not ready for their unlimited imagination, your data science team can become a real security time bomb. So let's get back to the main topic of this presentation and address the famous elephant in the room. Data science projects are almost always monstrous security holes. So we will cover these issues and we'll present how to find a solution that keeps everyone happy. The data scientist on one hand and all the IT security experts on the other hand. So here is a brief outline of the presentation. We will discuss about cheese, about locks and about people who panic. So let's start with a data science framework that was really hype in data science around the year 2016, Hadoop. Nowadays, it's also sometimes referred as Databricks. It's important to know that there are big differences um, in terms of security amongst all data science tools. In terms of security, what you really want to avoid is to expose yourself to all the hackers creeping on the internet. The internet is really a dangerous place for that. So we don't want any open holes in our security, like in the Swiss cheese here, don't we? So that's why you have to secure and close your server as much as possible to avoid any intrusion with firewalls everywhere. Unfortunately, as far as security is concerned, it's a bit of a failure with Hadoop and Databricks systems. Because these systems, they force you to open no less than 57 IP ports on your servers. You might as well say that your security becomes a real Swiss cheese with holes all over the place. It's a Hadoop Swiss cheese. <laughs> so in conclusion, elephants do not protect you from mice. And in practice, this is indeed what we see at our customer site. There are always one or two customers who want to test Hadoop. And in the time span of two or three months, their entire analytical system is hacked. And when I say hacked, it's really the total package. Twice in no less than six months, the same company was the target of ransomware, where hackers were demanding millions of euros to give back the analytical system that they stole. Now we always have backups. But the problem arises when we need to recreate the data lake. Recomputing the data lakes from the raw data with Anatella is not a big deal. It will take a few hours. But with other solutions, it can literally take weeks. So imagine all your activities tops for several weeks. Terrible. So my advice is to avoid Hadoop or Databricks altogether. In terms of security, it's the worst solution possible. Anything is better. But let's now assume that your team managed to keep the Hadoop system safe and secure. As I said, we data scientists are very creative. So how will we make your day cloudy with a chance of bugger? We'll find a way. Now, fortunately, there are plenty of other data science tools besides Hadoop or Databricks. In the example here, we see a small data science project done in Python. The idea here is just to read a small table out of a database and then save the table to a text file on your hard drive. Well, when we look at this code, we see something really annoying in terms of security. The password to connect to the database is directly visible in plain sight in red here. 
This means that anyone who sees this little piece of code will be able to connect to your database and steal all your data, or almost anyone. A small picture of this computer screen with a mobile phone and then you have lost all your data. Basically, your security is as robust as your most dishonest employee. And he has all the passwords, no good. That's a bit annoying because if you misplace the data of European citizen, it can really cost you a lot. Indeed, the European law states that you can be fined up to 4% of your global revenue. And here is a small table with the fines given to the European companies, just to show you that these fines they are for everybody, not only for Facebook or Amazon. So in summary, you really want to avoid that from happening. Now, don't think that if you buy a multi-million analytical solution like SAS, you will have a better protection. Passwords are just as visible in SAS. You can see that here. And in real life, when the most dishonest or distracted person who has access to all the passwords does something bad, Batman is not there to save the day. It's up to you to take care of it so they can't even have the opportunity to leak data in the first place. So in other words, it's your role to be the hero that the data security needs. You are the Batman or the Superman uh, in this picture because, uh, yeah, you know, Superman, unlike Batman, it has real powers. <laughs> okay, so let's see now how to do the same thing with Timmy. Let's connect to the database. To do that, we'll use the uh, ODBC box. <laughs> Click Manage Connection, add a connection defined on ODBC. We select the connection, we type here our login. Okay, and the password. Okay, now we have our connection here. And we can use this connection to connect to the database with a little wizard. We see all the table, we select this one, we see the columns, do OK run and we see the table. Now the only thing that is left to do is to save this table into a text file. Here I'll call it aa.txt. Run that and you see here aa.txt it appears. Easy and simple and almost without touching the keyboard. Our little Anatella graph here is saved inside a file with the .anatella extension. These .anatella files are actually simple text files in XML format. So the next question that we ask ourselves is, is the database password directly visible inside our little Anatella file? Let's have a look at the file here and check. You will notice that there are no clear password visible here. Everything is encrypted. That's really great. So we saw that with Anatella, everything is well secured because no passwords are visible. Everything is fine. Now let's assume that we really want to use this little piece of Python code uh, because we are really a fan of Python. How do we secure this little piece of Python code? The first thing to do is to copy past the Python code inside a Python box inside Anatella. So this is what we did here. But that's not enough. When you open the .anatella file inside the text editor, we still see that we still have the same problem. The password inside the Python code is still directly visible in plain sight. This is where a really unique functionality of Anatella comes into play. The name of this functionality is abstraction layer. This abstraction layer allows you to define parameters for the boxes that contains code. Here we see that we have three parameters defined. The database login, the database password, and the SQL command to execute on the database. These are the three parameters that we see when we are in the normal operating mode of Anatella. But when we switch to the expert operating mode of Anatella, we see much more. We see that we can actually modify our little piece of code in Python here. And instead of writing the password in plain sight, we will write id pass instead. 
ID pass is a variable that will be initialized automatically by Anatella when the Python script starts. And ID pass is not just any kind of variable, it's a password type of variable that contains passwords for your database. Super easy, isn't it? Now we ask ourselves the same question again. Is the database password visible inside our .anatella file? Let's open the file and check inside. And as you can see, everything is fine. No passwords are visible in clear sight. So I'm going to do a little digression here and briefly leave the subject of cybersecurity to give you more information about this famous new functionality named abstraction layer. This abstraction layer is a unique feature of Anatella, and we just saw that it allows you to secure your scripts made in R, Python or JavaScript. But it has many other advantages. One very good advantage is that it allows you to use all the power of R, Python and JavaScript without having to see or type any kind of code. For example, here I will be making an histogram on data coming from my database. And to make this histogram, I am going to use a R library uh, that uses the R graphical charting engine that is named ggplot2. So let's do that. Okay, so I just drag and drop this little box there. Select one option here. Um, increasing engine rush, run. And here is the little uh, chart. Okay, let's go back. That was really easy, isn't it? And all this without having to get a headache writing complex ggplot2 R code. That is completely horrible to write. Everything is done with the mouse and it's just a pleasure to work like that. So let's go back to the subject of cybersecurity. We saw that we can encrypt and protect the database passwords used inside our little R and Python codes. But that's not all you can encrypt. You can also encrypt the full code from a box, like here, to prevent any alteration of the box. Or you can encrypt the whole Anatella graph with all the boxes in it. This encryption makes the whole Anatella graph 100% untouchable. It's completely locked. And even in this weird form, the Anatella graph remains perfectly executable. For example, we can schedule in a few mouse clicks the daily execution of this graph here. That is completely encrypted, no worries. In fact, with Anatella, it doesn't matter if the graph is encrypted or not, it just works. And finally, in a much more traditional way, we can also encrypt the data in the columns of the table that we are manipulating. In this way, even if someone steals all your data tables, the thieves only get tables containing incomprehensible characters. So, no worries. There is another nice thing to know here. You see, the encryption and decryption, decryption key, it doesn't even have to be on the machine that decrypts and manipulates the data. This key can very well be stored on a completely different machine. This is called deported key storage. And with Anatella, you can use a deported storage to store all your sensitive stuffs, like decryption key and database password. So here is a small example of deported storage. In this example, we'll read a small table out of an Oracle database and save this same table inside a text file on our hard drive. The password to connect to Oracle is deported. It's not stored on the machine that runs this graph. This password is actually stored in a remote database. And here, with this box, Anatella connects to the remote database, retrieves the Oracle password in its encrypted form, then here it decrypts the passwords and finally saves it inside a global parameter. Then we use this global parameter as a password to connect to Oracle here and to do whatever we need to do with the data that comes from Oracle. 
One advantage of this way of doing things is that you have a central repository for all your passwords. And if your database's passwords change, and they should for security reasons, then you just have to update the password inside the central repository and all the processes continue to work. Another advantage is that you can isolate the central repository with your password with firewalls to add another layer of security. Now for very sensitive processes, we can do more than encrypt them and secure them with deported password. We can bind these sensitive processes to a specific machine. And if a thief tries to execute a sensitive anatelagraph on an unauthorized machine, then he will just see the message forbidden machine and nothing will happen. And to bind a critical process to a specific machine, it's really easy. So here are a few examples uh, on how to do that in Python, Air, JavaScript, and with a simple Anatella box. The principle is really simple. We just check if the hardware ID of our server is authorized. This hardware ID is generated by Anatella, and it uniquely identifies the server that is running the graph. So here is a little summary of what we just saw together today. We saw that we had access to many different levels of encryption for maximum security. So these are the five levels available. We also discovered a new concept called abstraction layer. And this concept has many advantages, like, for example, not having to waste time typing code. Another advantage is that it allows the analytical culture to grow inside your company, which is really important. We also saw that we can easily use deported storage to store password or decryption key. And finally, we saw that we can link the execution of uh, sensitive processes to certain specific servers. Okay, so... All these little examples are really nice, but obviously they only scratch the surface of what is possible with Timmy. Timmy is a complete data science solution with tons of original features. It allows you to push the boundaries of what is possible in data science. As Arthur from Volvo says very well, with Timmy and a good SSD, you can absolutely do anything. For example, some customers are using Timmy to analyze on a single machine data tables that have several hundreds of billions of rows. Billions, not millions. So Timmy is really the best big data tool for analyzing any data volumetry. But it's also simply the best data science tool, plain and simple. I think that Timmy is so much appreciated by every data workers because of its cognitive amplification properties. <laughs> Just Timmy literally gives you enhanced brain capabilities. So if you are interested in the subject of cognitive amplification, we just published a video a short while ago about it on YouTube. And finally, Timmy is really designed to be accessible to everyone. As Alejandro says, in a few mouse clicks, you can automate the most complex data processes. And Alejandro, he knows what he's talking about because he analyzes the raw data of all the smart meters that measure the electricity consumption of nearly 30 million households in Colombia. And that's not a small volume neither. This is some very serious business and everything with a mouse. But now I think that the best thing for you to do is still to see what Timmy is all about by yourself. So to test Timmy, nothing could be easier. You download the small installation tool that is freely available on timmy.eu slash downloads. This installation tool is just a small six megabyte download and you run it. When the installation tool starts up for the first time, it displays a small web form, which you fill in, and there you are good to go. You don't need any administrative rights to install and test Timmy. Everything is automated and direct. Okay, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, I kindly request you to show your support by hitting the like button below. If you have uh, any questions, feel free to let them in the comments. 
If you have any specific ideas or topics you'd like us to cover in our next video, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments below again. Please subscribe to make sure to stay tuned for more amazing content from us. And in the meantime, I invite you to watch our other cool videos inside the Timmy channel. See you next time.